guys, it's Cameron on the Murder for you guys, and this is me reviewing. This is a movie that I've been wanting to see for a very long time now. I have heard amazing things about this movie, and I didn't know if I was actually getting a chance to see this before the year ended, but luckily I did, and that is none other than Lady Bird. And what Lady Bird is essentially about is we center on Cerise Ronan's character, who is actually named Christine, but she likes to call herself Lady Bird. And she is a teenager who is a senior in high school. She's quickly going through adulthood, and she's at the point in her life where she's basically trying to figure out what career path she wants to take. And basically, the whole film is her kind of discovering things about herself and really understanding what's important in life. And that's really all I want to say. So, Lady Bird in general, I was definitely very interested in this movie for a couple reasons. One, I've heard amazing praise from it. This has like 100% Rotten Tomatoes, which is so rare, but it has 100%, and that immediately got me intrigued. But also, Greta Gerwig is an actress that I've always kept, um, you know, an eye on ever since I saw Mistress America, which she was fantastic in. I've always been very interested in her work. I think she was phenomenal in that film, and I didn't see some of the other stuff she did, but no. Knowing that she was directing this, and this was like her first actual direct, like this was her directorial debut, definitely got me very interested, and I didn't really know what I was going to get though, and let me just say right off the bat that I am so happy that I went into this not knowing a lot, because Lady Bird is easily one of the best movies I have seen all year, it's also a masterpiece, I love pretty much everything about Lady Bird, I really don't have a single flaw with this film, we're going to get into all the stuff that makes this film so great, starting off with the cast... And easily one of the best things about this movie is the cast. The cast here, basically from top to bottom, is absolutely phenomenal. Everyone really does kill it in their roles, and they all feel so natural. There's really not an actor here that feels like they're acting, and that's when you know you have a really great actress here. Cerise Ronan, let's just talk with her, because she's always been an actress that I've really enjoyed. I've seen her in a lot of stuff, but after this movie... I don't know, guys. This might be her best work. Now, I say that with, you know, a grain of salt because of the fact that I have seen her do other stuff. Her role in Brooklyn definitely does rival this, but I don't know. This might be. She's just, she gives such a dedicated, quiet, just natural performance here. And the character of Lady Bird is so well done because she isn't one of those characters that's just so weird or she's an introvert or... She's really out there. No, Lady Bird is someone who kind of is just average, and she really is learning a lot about herself, and she's someone who likes to defy her mother a lot, because her and her mother are very different people, and... The transformation that she undergoes throughout this movie is incredible to watch. She starts off this movie, and she's just very naive, and she's really in over her head of what she can really do, and she doesn't really perform well in school either, and a lot of the things that she really wants to do, they're just not realistic, and I really loved the way Cerise Rome portrayed it. Every scene with her just feels so sincere, every scene with her felt so honest, and... It felt like a real person. It didn't feel like a character. Everything about this role is absolute perfection. If she doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, I would be very surprised. She absolutely killed it in this role. And like I said, this may very well be her best work yet because she was fantastic here. But who rivals her is Laurie Metcalf, who also is fantastic in this movie. Marion is a very challenging role because she's someone who... Yes, makes a lot of, uh, you know, she's very overbearing, and yes, sometimes she isn't the best mother, but you can't help but feel incredibly sympathetic for her, because Lady Bird just doesn't really appreciate her, and she doesn't really seem to respect her all that much, and she's in a place where... She wants to have this great relationship with her daughter, but you can tell that they're really never going to have that, and it's very sad to see, and some of the best scenes in the movie are just the scenes of the two of them together, and the different perspectives they have on life, and the different things that they want to do. There are a lot of things that Lady Bird does that Mary doesn't approve of, right up until her name. She does not approve of her name. She addresses her by her real name quite often in this movie, and Lady Bird really doesn't appreciate that, and I thought the chemistry between these two was so natural, 
general. It feels like mother and daughter. It just feels, again, just like these are, you know, this is an actual mother and daughter, and I really do love what they did here. And she has this one scene towards the end of the film that honestly had me on the verge of tears. She did an incredible job here. If she, again, if she does not get nominated, I will be very surprised. Lori Metcalf especially, I think, deserves a nomination here. She just absolutely killed it in this role, and I really love what she did here. And everyone else as well is fantastic. They're not nearly as dynamic as, you know, Cerise or Lori because they are the two most prominent roles. But everyone else still does a great job. Tracy Letts is great here, you know, as um, Lady Bird's father. I think he did a really great job. He's got this one scene towards the end that I honestly really did enjoy. Uh, Lucas Hedges is, you know, the kid from Manchester by the Sea. He's in this movie. And I definitely saw something in him in that movie. And I'm glad to see he's getting more work because he really does a great job here. He's not in the movie as much as you may think he is, but when a certain revelation happens, I'm not going to lie, he, again, had me on the verge of tears. He did a really great job here, and the way he was able to convey so much out of such a small role is remarkable. He really did a great job. Timothy Clement, I thought, was also really good, but who really surprised me the most, I have to say, was Beanie Feldstein. Yeah, we're talking about the chick from Neighbors 2, and... You know, this was the one who was a little bit more on the heavier side and who I really was not a fan of that movie, but she killed it here. She plays Lady Bird's best friend. Um, you know, she plays Lady Bird's best friend, Julie, and I really loved her character. I thought she did a really great job here. She was really funny at points, but she also had a lot of emotional stuff as well, and I thought those two just had really great chemistry. Really, everyone killed it here. Even some of the smaller roles, like Odia Rush, or even um, Lois Smith as, you know, um, the main sister of the Catholic school, they all really did an incredible job. There isn't a single performance in this movie that I feel like is half ass. There's not a single one that feels understated. Everyone absolutely killed it here, and that is definitely one of the best things about this movie. Surprisingly, though, as good as the performances are, it's not the best thing about this movie. Without a doubt, the thing that makes this movie as good as it is, is Greta Gerwig's directing, which is nothing short of amazing, because you would think, given how uniquely structured and given how professional in film this feels, that Gerwig has been doing this for years, but she hasn't. This is her first directorial debut, and it's astounding. It's one of the best directorial debuts I have seen in quite some time, and that's mainly because this is a bit of a passion project for Gerwig. A lot of this movie is actually based on her personal life, and I very much did feel that throughout this film. It felt like real people. It felt like this actually happened. Well, that's because it did. Gerwig grew up in Sacramento, California. Gerwig was involved in musical theater like Lady Bird was. Uh, Gerwig wanted to get out of Sacramento, California just like Lady Bird does, you know, Gerwig had, um, you know, was kind of a rebellious teenager just like Lady Bird was. So there's a lot of similarities between the two, and I really enjoyed that. It gave me the sense that this is something that Gerwig has probably wanted to make for a long time, but just has never really had the time to do it till now. And the fact that this turned out so well, you can just tell the amount of passion and really just the amount of heart that was put into this project. And you just don't really see that a lot. So that's the thing. I mean, sure, you'll see a director that's really passionate about their script, but this is a different kind of passion. This is something where you can really tell it came from the heart. This was something that really did connect with Gerwig and just her passion in this movie. It's so well realized, and I think she absolutely killed it in this film. But she did a good job of not making this depressing either. It's honestly really funny. I was laughing a lot more than I expected to. I thought that we're, the, mo the movie is honestly really funny throughout. Uh, it has some of the funniest moments of the entire year, and her directing, again, just absolute perfection. I thought the dramatic moments and the comedy just really worked hand in hand, and I really love the way that was done. But the writing as well is just such a great screenplay, because like I said, it doesn't follow the cliches of other coming-of-age films you've seen. Uh, most coming-of-age films, you know, there are a lot of beats that they follow. You know, you got this girl, and she's kind of weird, and then she meets this guy, and he changes her, but this movie doesn't really do that. Yes, there are definitely boys in this film, that is for sure. There are actually two people that Lady Bird does get involved with. I'm not going to get into that, but it's really well done. 
but it's less focused on, you know, her relationship with the boys and more focused on her relationship with two things, her mother and really herself. It's it's her and her mother. That's a big part of it is how these two, like I said, really don't think alike at all and how they really kind of are hurting each other uh, for the worst, honestly. And you really do see that throughout the film. I mean, you know, Lori Metcalf as a mother, she's just very picky and anything that Lady Bird wants to do, she kind of disapproves of, and you really do see throughout the film, there are parts where, you know, she wants her to go to a public school, but Lady Bird doesn't really want that, she wants to go, she wants to get out of the state, but Laurie Metcalf wants to go to a state school, and I thought all that stuff was really interesting, and I really did love the way that was portrayed here, and just, again, the littlest, um, things that they've had, there's a scene involving a prom dress, and I was honestly riveted, that's not something that I'd usually be interested in, I can't relate to that kind of stuff but the way that they handled it was just so riveting and I love the way it was done and there's definitely something to be said about the structure of this movie because this movie is not structured like your typical film the film often just picks up in the middle of conversations it isn't like you know a scene starts it's kind of like in the midst of um you know like I said conversations and it's really cool the way they do that. I haven't really seen many movies use that technique before and I think what Gurig was trying to do is she was telling us okay yes this conversation is going on but now we're only going to show you the stuff that's really important stuff that's really integral to the story and I thought it was actually a really cool idea I really like the way those played out I can understand if someone doesn't like it I will definitely say that I can understand if it takes someone out of the film but for me it just made the film feel more realistic and it made it feel more honest and it just really worked for this film I mean like I said it's a very raw portrayal of adolescence and it's handled very well but what's also handled very well are the characters this film really understands these two characters very well. It understands that Lady Bird is someone who isn't the greatest student in the world. In fact, she's not that great at all. She's uh, not failing most of her classes, but she's like borderline. She's like on the cusp of failing most of her classes. She's not really doing well in her studies. She has these big dreams. Well, like I said, most of them aren't actually going to happen. Um, she's someone who is just not really aware of what she's really getting herself into. And she tends to deviate a lot of what her mother wants her to do simply because her mother wants her to do it while her mother is kind of the same. She's very controlling and, you know, she has these certain things she wants Lady Bird to do. She wants Lady Bird to be a certain way, but she's not like that. And I thought they handled that perfectly in this movie. Lady Bird, again, she's not just this weird girl. If anything, she is kind of just average. In fact, there's a great scene where she realizes that she is just that. She might just be average. That might be as good as she's going to get. And I thought it was one of the best scenes of the year, honestly. It was just such a well-done scene, the way they handled that. And there are many scenes like that throughout this movie. The movie has a lot to say about acceptance and not so much how people accept you, how you accept yourself. That eventually you just tell yourself, this is who I am, this is how I'm going to be, and this is what's most convenient to me. And I thought it was honestly very well portrayed, and again, I thought it was very realistic. But what's even more realistic is the way this film portrays high school, which I will compare it to The Edge of Seventeen last year. This film reminded me a lot of Edge of Seventeen from the trailer, and it's even more so in this movie. The way Edge of Seventeen got public high school down to a T, that's how this movie gets Catholic high school. Now, granted, I've never been to Catholic school, so I don't really know how it's portrayed, but it seemed like it was very realistic here because they don't portray it as this horrible thing. They don't portray it as all the nuns are really strict. In fact, there's a scene in this film where you think it's going to play out a certain way. It's involving a prank. And I'm like, oh shit, this is going to have some horrible repercussions. But then you see what ends up happening, and it doesn't really go that way. And I thought it was honestly really clever. Why? Because that's kind of how it would play out in real life, if you really think about it. And again, it really surprised me. I did not expect them to take it in that direction at all. But it made the film that much better for me. It made the film that much more engaging. And there are many scenes in here like that, where you think it's going to go one way, and it goes another way. And... I love that. This film is very unpredictable in that sense, and it just creates a sense of, you know, making you want to watch the film, and I thought they did a really good job with that. The film has a very good understanding of what it is. It's not trying to, it doesn't feel like a movie, and that's when you know 
how well presented it is, and I thought that was honestly very well done here. The film's also very funny. Like I said, there's a lot of funny scenes here. I was laughing a lot throughout the movie, and I thought the structure was also really good. The way the film is basically just telling a year in her life. Also, the movie takes place in 2002, and that again was one of the indicators that I thought this was based on Gerwig's personal life, because why else would she set the film in 2002 to 2003? That probably is the year that Gerwig graduates. She's around her 30s now. I'm pretty sure that's the year she graduated, and, um... Yeah, so it makes sense why she said in that in that time period. Um, I think again this was kind of an autobiographical tale, so to speak, and I thought again that was very well portrayed. Uh, the cinematography here as well is great. You really get a sense of the California landscape. You really do feel that throughout the film. Lady Bird doesn't really enjoy it, but there are points where you see that she does, and I thought that was also very well handled. The score in this movie is fantastic, particularly a um, a piece towards the end might be one of my favorite scores of the entire year. If this movie doesn't get nominated for best score, I will be very surprised because it's one of the best scores I've heard all year. I think the score here, it just works perfectly. Um, I think the score uh, really did... It, they, it, John Bryan really did tackle the score in a very well-done manner, and I was very impressed with the way the score was done here. And like I said, the editing. This movie is not structured like your typical film. It picks up in the midst of conversations, and I thought it actually worked really well. It kept the film raw, it kept the film grounded, and I thought they handled that very well here. Um... And like I said, the movie does have a lot to say when it comes to the idea of, you know, it does have the message of respecting your elders that's definitely in there, but I think it really does go beyond that. I think it's more about respecting yourself and realizing the importance that your elders really have in your life. It's not so much just respecting your elders, because that's very broad. I mean, we've seen that done in many movies. This film goes beyond that. It's it's about, like I said, respecting, you know, realizing the role they have in your life, realizing where they're coming from, and realizing why they you actually need them. And Again, without spoiling it, the ending is easily one of my favorite endings in the entire year. I thought it was perfect, but it's one of those endings where it ends and you really want to see more. You don't want to get away from these characters. You want the movie to continue, and that's mainly because of how well presented it is. Like I said, these don't feel like characters. They feel like regular individuals that you want to help and that you're seeing, you know, you're, you're getting a glimpse into their life, and you want to know more about them, you want to know what they go through after this, and it's just incredibly well structured the way they did that, and I love the way the movie was done, I thought they handled that perfectly, and I thought the ending, again, really capitalized on the fact of, you know, realizing the role elders are in your life, without spoiling it, labor goes through a pretty tremendous transformation in the final act of this movie, and it was really well done, it could have come across as really cheesy, but it just felt really honest and natural, and again, that is due to Gerwig's magnificent direction. Lady Bird is easily one of the best movies I have seen all year. I love pretty much everything about this movie. There really isn't a single complaint I could think of. I couldn't even really think of a nitpick. The only nitpick I had is that in the very beginning, I did think that Lady Bird and Lucas Hedges' relation was a little bit rushed, but there's a revelation later in the film that actually made a lot of sense. I'm like, okay, that's why this was actually rushed. So it's not even a flaw anymore. Other than that, guys, I, I can't think of a flaw here. I loved everything about this movie. This is one of the best of its kind. It's one of the best coming-of-age films I think I've ever seen. I know I praised Edge of 17 last year, but this really is the Edge of 17 this year. But it's not the Edge of 17. It's it's a different film. I should definitely, you know, I, I should definitely say that, that this is a very different film. It's not trying to be Edge of 17. It's not trying to be other coming-of-age films you see. It's its own thing, and that's why it works as well as it does. Lady Bird is an absolute masterpiece, and I am without a doubt going to give Lady Bird in any... A plus. Seriously, guys, do yourself a favor and check this out as soon as you can. I know it's going wide tomorrow, but do yourself a favor. It is absolutely worth it. It's one of the most heartfelt, um, just well-done coming-of-age stories you can see. And I think you're definitely going to hear about this one come Oscar season for sure. But that's my review. Hope you enjoyed the most. Guys, thoughts to me overall. Left your thoughts. And if you have seen this movie, which I know a lot of people haven't, unfortunately, there was surprisingly a lot of people in my theater. I wasn't really expecting it, but there was a lot more people than I expected. So if you get a chance to see it, definitely do so it's absolutely worth your time but that's it for my review hope you guys enjoy I'll see you guys in my next video and we'll see you guys for that okay bye